all for coming. So good to see you all. So, I'm Megan Doty, as I was introduced, and um, I've lived in Southern Oregon for the last 12 years, minus three years where I was in Mallorca, Spain, and I've been in practice um, doing acupuncture for that long. And I've been treating people with all manner of malady, including allergies to autoimmune conditions, to pain, to women's health conditions. And over the last few years, I have um, gone into the world of cosmetic acupuncture. And that's what I've been doing. Um, Thank you so much for coming. Um, you're likely here because you've noticed signs of your own aging, and um, you might not be feeling great about yourself. It might be inhibiting your relationships, or um, you might not go out if you, you know, feel like hiding. One of my clients said well to me that. Um, here. She said, oh my God, do I really look like that? And I just want to hide some days. And I think that we can all relate to this as we're aging. And so I'm here to speak to the voice that says I'm not enough. So how did I come to this point? Um, for me, um, I was a child, I was extremely shy, and I was, I love my mother, and I know that she didn't intend for this, but she was very critical of herself, and this kind of bled into me. Um, when looking at a photo, she would often remark, look who broke the camera again. Yeah, um, Yeah. I, I love helping people find solutions for their issues in a natural, holistic way. And it is possible to live from that, um, that way of living. And um, in terms of aging, like, you don't have to do invasive procedures and um, you don't have to lose your spark. And I think that what I'm doing here is helping people find that and um, heal holistically. Um, so my intention as a practitioner is to address the superficial, the superficial by what's going on underneath. Um, whether you're, you're dubious or excited about acupuncture, I think it's still remarkable to see the benefits that people get through it. Um, I've always felt talented as a healer, but it's very satisfying to um, see people visibly change in front of my eyes. Um, so I'm see seeing people get happier, and um, something happened recently. A patient reported an increase in her confidence, probably due to the fact that her face was more lifted, and her libido came back after being absent for many years. And she reported that she was, she got on Tinder and she was hooking up with people 25 years her junior. <laughs> so this is what to expect from this talk. Um, gonna look at how beauty standards change and how it's important to focus on vitality and attractiveness over unrealistic ideals. Mm -hmm. um, so going into what happens as we age physically, uh, short-term and long-term side effects of Botox and fillers from a Western and Eastern point of view, uh, Chinese medicine, for instance, perspective on aging, a case study, number one beauty trend of 2024 that I endorse, and some things that can help you.
so these are the challenges we face when it comes to aging naturally, I believe. So it's societal pressure to conform to unrealistic beauty standards, internalized self-criticism that prevents us from fully embracing our own uniqueness and attractiveness, and there's a lack of education and awareness about non-invasive and sustainable treatments. And these stories highlight a fundamental issue that has persisted throughout history, which is how this has come about. Um, so I want to look at history. So here, around um, 26,000 years ago, we have a sculpture of this beautiful woman who is, it's like a fertility sculpture. And then in ancient Egypt, this is what was considered beautiful. In ancient Greece, we have Aphrodite here with stomach rolls and wide hips, small breasts, big nose, small lips. And then the 1400s during the Renaissance, people were plucking their hairlines and their eyebrows to make their foreheads appear larger. And pear shapedness and flattened chests were in. And then in the 20s, androgyny was coming in. Curves were no longer in vogue. <coughs> and people wore shapeless dressing, dresses and were beginning to cut their hair short. In the 1950s, after the war, people were eating more and full lips, hairstyles were voluminous, hourglass figures. My father used to say to me, Nando, don't be a schnook. It's not how you feel. It's how you look. It's better to look good than to feel. And so that was 1985 on Saturday Night Live, and that's what America was being told. It's better to feel, not feel, it doesn't matter how you feel, it's good to look good. And so that led into the 90s and 2000s when I was coming of age, and um, yeah, known as hero, heroin chic. Mm -hmm. So gaunt and malnourished, boyish, thin, and depressed. Yeah. And then our current time period, we have, surgery. <laughs> yeah, you need surgery, always. <laughs> so, oh gosh. And this is, um, so kind of, this is just to demonstrate how we have our culture um, goes back and forth. There's like whiplash, full, gaunt, full. I bet we're gonna go into another gaunt phase soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, so I think that, that what remains consistent is that, um, you know, we're, as a society, as women in general, we kind of idealize something that's, that's impossible to reach. And it's um, like Sisyphus pushing a boulder up the hill. And um, it's impossible. And I don't think that we should be focusing on these ideals that are put forth by society. Um, I think we need to be focusing on our own health and vitality and well-being and the light in our eyes. Um, so a question for you. Have you ever looked at a picture of yourself from the past and you're like, why did I do that to myself? And, and conversely, like, look back on yourself and be like, why was I critical of myself? Um, and so it's just futile to chase trends. And if, if you're a daisy, um, why are you trying to be an orchid? And so I believe that no one should have to sacrifice their well-being <laughs> to fit into a narrow idea of what beauty is. I guess I just really believe this. <laughs> um, so <laughs> beauty is life force awakened. So what are some things that increase your, your life force? I'm asking you. Being in the forest. Yes. Movement. Yes. Like dancing. Dancing. Breathing. Breathing. Eating good food. Eating good food. Drinking lots of water. Drinking lots of water. 
Having good friends. Having good friends. Laughing. (laughs) So good. (laughs) Um, So learning about my story, like I'm just curious, have do any of you have things about like how you grew up, just in a few words? Too tall, too strong, too broad shoulders. We were all starving ourselves to be impossibly thin and to have this space between our thighs. Oh god. And so no, we were we were just we were all like being basically anorexic. Oh. And um, there was a lot of pressure to wear certain kinds of clothes and have your hair be a certain way and wear makeup and and kind of if you didn't do those things, well, you were definitely not going to fit in. Yeah. My mother and of course my friends' mothers were just all terrified of gaining weight and being fat. I was put on a diet at seven years old. Oh, oh wow. Skin milk. <sighs> and then um, when I was either nine or ten in grammar school, they, uh, the nurse came, they weighed us in front of everybody. Mm. And I weighed in 100 pounds at 9 or 10 years old. Oh. Absolutely mortified oh. in front of everybody. Mm. That sounds very difficult. Yeah, you know, it's just like, and that sort Shameful. of obsession, absolute mm-hmm. obsession. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was like the airbrush thing, like nothing mm-hmm. out of place. Mm-hmm. 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 Like I had these white spots on my teeth and I was so embarrassed by it, I got the ears and I got older and I didn't need them. Mm. It's just a total, like, nothing out of place, you know? Mm-hmm. Just everything has to look perfect all the time. Mm-hmm. Or we won't be loved. Or we won't be loved. Yeah. I just remember seeing my mom just, like, similarly, like, constantly criticizing herself, like, all the time. It was just, like, from my perspective, like, she was just her. And then seeing her just, like, scrutinize every single... So, of course, I did the same thing, and of course, I read Seventeen magazine, and of course, I looked in the mirror and, and said, I would literally, I have this pooch, and I've always had a pooch, even when I was scrawny, I mean, I was made fun of for being short and scrawny and, like, prude, because I had, like, no boobs, and I was, like, short and scrawny, but still, I had this pooch, and I would look in the mirror, and I'd be like, if I could just cut that off, then I would be good then I'd be perfect, yeah. but I could never get rid of it, even when I was running and doing all the things. Mm-hmm. It's like body shame is in the air we breathe. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's insane. <sighs> Thank you all for sharing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, just wanted to go into life expectancy in the United States right now. Females, it's about 80, year, 80 years old, and males, it's about 75. And how much of that time are we contemplating the stuff that we hate about ourselves or not enjoying life? And also, how much are we doing things to ourselves that are, are dangerous and causing ill health? And so this is a statistic I found that 18 years of those 80 years are spent in ill health. That's like Mm -hmm. remarkable, I think. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna go into what ages us. And I'd love to hear your input too. But this is a picture of a woman who was a truck driver. And Mm -hmm. she's around 80 years old. And she, you know, the left side of her face was just constantly exposed to sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, just an example of like what sun can do to you. And she probably didn't use sunscreen or protection or anything like that. So, sun exposure, cigarette smoke, secondhand as well, sugar consumption, inflammation of all kinds. Like these days, inflammation's number one cause of aging, basically. Um, alcohol, inflammatory. Um, caffeine, it's a diuretic, and as you'll we'll talk about yin and yang, but it affects the yin, it's very draining. So you're there to the moisture in your body. Stress, as we all know, harsh soaps, sleep deprivation, poor digestion and nutrition, and then environmental factors like places that are dry, like the place I grew up in. My parents are so aged. Like if you compare someone in Portland with 
where I grew up. <laughs> like, it's drastically different. That's why I live here, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, what else can you think of that contributes to aging? Worrying. Worrying, yeah. Negative emotions and stress was what came to me, but also like just all the toxins in our environment. Like even if you eat the most right. perfect diet ever, there's still like yeah, we're still exposed to a lot of yeah. toxicity. Yeah, toxicity for sure. Yeah. Fire, smoke. Fire, smoke. Yeah. <laughs> smoke. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So it's important to have clean air. Okay, so we're going to go over the, the, the animated physio physiology of the changes in the face. So this is a woman, on the left is a younger woman, and the one on the right is an older woman. And you can tell the, the bone is very different. There's like a widening of the eye socket, she's missing some teeth. Everything's kind of um, collapsed and um, used up in a way. So this is what happens as we age. Not Maybe it doesn't happen to everyone, but it's pretty typical to lose, have some bone loss. Um, I think that the face muscles are pretty interesting. They're very different than the rest of the, boss, the body. All those muscles are like connections of, of um, bone to muscle, etc. And with the face, it's um, like muscle to skin and fascia. So they're very different. They function differently. And with age, these muscles get stuck in position, I think kind of t due to dehydration and lack of chi flow and blood flow. And they get stuck and they create creasing and wrinkles and asymmetry. Things get caught and dehydrated. And then you have the, the fat layer. You see the woman on the left is a lot younger and then fat kind of you know, disintegrates a little bit and it descends due to gravity. And then with the skin, um, oil production reduces significantly after age 30. Melanocytes, which are the cells that make pigment in the skin, weaken in the 30s and 40s. You get um, thin skin, and collagen and elastin begin to reduce after the age of 30. And so you can see here a picture of like young skin and then older skin. There's a lot of degradation of the co collagen underneath, and you get some pitting and wrinkling. So this is a, some statistics I found, where women in the United States, between the ages of 35 and 55, 70% um, have gone under some sort of cosmetic procedure, Botox, fillers, laser treatments, cosmetic surgery. And of those, 44%, according to this statistic, um, experience negative side effects. The University of College in London found that of the Botox users, 80% suffer some, from side effects, including headaches, dizziness, and brain fog. Hmm. And so I'm just bringing in a, a picture of like the Western medicine perspective, the body as a machine. The Western outlook is like a war on disease, the doctor says the general, disease is enemy, patient is occupied territory, and the goal is to eradicate the symptoms and maximize performance. And huh. these treatments are very much not taking into consideration how the rest of the body is affected. And so an example of that here, this woman has some black lungs, but she's you know, done a lot of procedures, so she looks beautiful on the outside. But what I want to focus on is beauty from the inside out here. And so I'm just going to share um, from a dermatologist, uh, Marin Locke, and she explains why she doesn't get Botox. I don't get Botox. I mean, obviously, right? And for a dermatologist on social media, that's pretty rare to see. Botox is actually the number one most popular cosmetic treatment in the world. I have gotten Botox in the past, and it's just not for me. I have never done it since. The last time I got it was about seven or eight years ago. And let me tell you, I could get Botox whenever I wanted. I could do it for free on myself if I wanted. That would probably even make a really cool YouTube video, but I'm not gonna do that. So that should tell you a lot about what I really think of Botox. But 
No judgment if you get in love Botox. It works and it is effective. But Botox is expensive and the price is only going up and up and up year over year. So problem number two, Botox is temporary. All neuromodulators, including the other brands I mentioned, last only for three to four months on average. And for many people, it lasts even less than that. Issues with repeated use of Botox. So for these people who get Botox more than once, did you know that you can develop antibodies to Botox, meaning it stops working, or you need way more units than you used to, which means it becomes more expensive for you to get it each treatment because you need more product to achieve the same effect. And if you want to get Botox injections repeatedly, is that your muscles can atrophy over time. That means they can shrink and weaken. Think about it. If you don't use a muscle or work that muscle, it shrinks. Have you ever seen a broken arm or a leg after it came out of a cast? All the muscles are so atrophied compared to the healthy arm or other healthy leg. The same thing happens with your facial muscles if you keep them under constant paralysis. This can give your forehead a bony look where your skin looks thin and the veins can look more prominent. And something else to consider, while we do believe that Botox is safe due to extensive studies with short-term use, we don't have extensive studies on long-term safety data in individuals who get Botox repeatedly for 10, 20, or 30 plus years. And with the trend now being preventative Botox and the encouragement for people to start in their 20s, this should be a real concern. So know your risks. First of all, you may end up not looking like you envisioned at all. If the Botox is placed improperly or injected into the wrong muscles, which is easier to do than you would think because these muscles are small and very closely connected, or if the Botox diffuses a little too far, you can get droopy eyelids that you cannot open all the way or a dropped brow. You can get asymmetry in your face or this weird curvature pattern to your forehead lines or even a Spock eyebrow look. And not all of these poor outcomes can be fixed. You might just have to wait three to four months for the Botox to wear off. To me, the biggest deal is the droopy eyelids, which affects vision and is very problematic in appearance. One of the more common side effects is a post-injection headache. For some, this may only last a few hours, while others, it can be days to weeks of a constant headache. This was something that I actually experienced each time with Botox, and it was not fun. It is more common than you think. You can expect bruising, which can take some time to resolve. You can experience vision changes like blurry vision or double vision. You can have an allergic reaction, which in some cases can be life-threatening. Again, these things are all very rare. And some newer reports I am seeing in the literature and hearing about from other injectors is this phenomenon of skin atrophy at the site of Botox injection. Now, there are also reports of rare side effects that have been documented in the literature after Botox injection for wrinkles, such as weakness in muscles that were not even injected. And people with certain medical conditions should not get Botox at all. So be sure to explain your full medical history to your injector. And problem number five, Botox is a gateway drug to more expensive and riskier cosmetic procedures. I see this all of the time. Once you get your feet wet and see nearly instant results from this procedure, you quickly start to consider the next thing, the next tweak, and how you look with your Botox becomes your new baseline for what you want to look like in your mind. And maybe after that, you branch out to fillers or some other cosmetic procedure, just a little bit here and there each visit. And slowly over time, your deviation from your natural look gets further and further until you are unsure what exactly is your baseline. Hmm. Just, wow. oh, 
So there's some things. And then I wanted to, to give a Chinese medicine take on Botox. We always hear about the Western medical perspective on acupuncture, gua sha, cupping, but what about the Chinese medical perspective on Western treatments like Botox? So we know that Botox or neurotoxins paralyzes your muscle. In other words, it blocks the normal functioning of your muscle. If you block the function, you block the energy, which is like creating a traffic jam for the energy to flow. And we call this stagnation, stagnation of qi in Chinese medicine. My concern is could qi stagnation over time weaken the muscle? Well, I found this article by Dr. Pat Wexler, who's a dermatologist who's been using Botox since the 90s. And she talks about how long-term use of Botox can create muscle atrophy, where your muscle shrinks and gets smaller. She recommends taking Botox breaks, which I second, and would add acupuncture and facial gua sha to strengthen the chi. So I did a lot of research on this as I was doing this talk, and um, Reddit is a great wealth of information on people's personal experiences, and so many people have so many side effects. Um, some people have said that bone loss can occur because you don't have contraction of the muscle, so you have more bone loss. That makes sense, actually. Um, Botox is tested on mice. If you're vegan, you <laughs> probably can't do Botox because um, it's tested on animals uh, for every batch to see that it works. It's tested. And um, so, yeah, extreme weakness, vision problems, couldn't move hands and fingers, diarrhea, because the, the injection went systemic. Difficulty mm -hmm. swallowing food oh. um, and saliva and water. This is typically facial Botox? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, and this person on the bottom, she got it from migraines um, and vision was a problem. Um, she had the, the symptoms of a stroke victim and she couldn't drive for almost three months. Eyes blurry oh and God. no glasses could clear it. Um, so she, and she remained sensitive and a bit strained to light, but she re recovered. And I know someone who is going blind and she blames Botox. Um, Botox also impairs your ability to understand the emotions of others. It's found out that um, we, our it's brain... It's like a whole face that doesn't move. Yes, a whole yeah. face that doesn't move. When your, your brain um, gets the signal by you mimicking the micro expressions of someone in front of you. Mm -hmm. So you become like socially retarded, essentially, um, or emotionally retarded. Um, like, <laughs> so much so. It, and it, it, the, the research, researcher said, it's somewhat ironic. People use Botox, and Botox to function better in social situations. You may look better, but you could suffer because you can't read other people's emotions where, well. Well, I would say that we can't read their emotions. Right. Neither, because yeah. nothing's moving. It's That's both directions. Yeah, so it's kind of, there's like a degradation of, of relating going on due to this. Okay, and that's Botox. <laughs> um, and here's fillers. And you may be wondering if I get filler or what my opinion is of filler. I'm going to go through all of that in this video, but as a spoiler alert, I do not have any filler in my face now, nor have I ever gotten filler. Common side effects are pain at the injection site. Another common side effect is bruising. I say to expect bruising, plan for it. And if you don't get any at all, consider yourself lucky. So let's talk about things that are a bit more serious that can happen with filler, like arterial occlusion which is probably one of the scariest ones. This means that filler is injected by accident into an artery or a vessel in your face, and it blocks the blood flow, so no blood can flow through it. And if no blood can flow through it, then whatever that vessel feeds will die. This can cause skin necrosis or skin death, and even worse, it can cause blindness that is permanent because many of the vessels on the face or the head go to the eyes, and if those are the ones that are cut off, the eye can go blind. This actually happens. It's a very real side effect of filler. It is rare, but it's real. The scary thing is that this can still happen to you because 
everybody's anatomy is different and this is not an exact science it's more of an art a risky art so let's talk even more side effects fillers can cause granulomas or little lumps under the skin these can create an unsightly look they can be painful they can create infection and other issues some studies are also linking fillers to autoimmune reactions so if you are someone who has autoimmune issues please discuss this in depth with your provider before getting your filler procedure done and lastly this is kind of a side effect or maybe just a consequence of the procedure but you just may not like the outcome after all that money and hassle you may hate the end result. If a dissolvable hyaluronic acid filler was used, you can get it dissolved with an injectable medicine called hyaluronidase, which is a whole other expense and can of worms. So just because you make the investment, there is no guarantee that you will like the result or that it will meet your expectation. And last, a word of caution before going down this road of cosmetic procedures, this is like your unofficial number six thing that you need to know, perhaps the most important and kind of sad situation really, but repeated injection with filler over time can lead to significant facial distortion. So this means that a little tweak here and there with a the syringe, maybe every quarter or every few months or just a few times a year can slowly start taking you farther and farther away from your natural look and not in a good way in more of a strange way that can be kind of hard to even look at. We see this in celebrities, now influencers, and other dermatologists and injectors all the time. Changes from one visit to the next may be small, but over time they add up. So it is important to realize this and be extremely cautious before going down this road. The world of cosmetic procedures can be addicting. We see this all the time. It really just turns into this obsession for some people. So just keep your perspective and realize that you have other options. When that hyaluronic acid filler is placed in your face, it's an implant intended to provide volume. Well, in that process of providing volume, it's also expanding those soft tissues deep down in your skin. And we know that expanding those soft tissues causes them to stretch over time. In the case of hyaluronic acid fillers, we're adding them to provide that volumizer as a cosmetic benefit. But on the back end, we are causing some tissue change and some tissue expansion, which changes the vascularity and the elasticity of those deep soft tissues. Those changes that I see in my practice are filler placed in the wrong areas, filler integrating into tissues that we don't want it to integrate into, such as a muscle, changing the dynamic movement of that muscle, and those muscles are very intricate and very precise with the way that they move our face. So small amounts of movement changes can be very noticeable in the overall facial harmony. And then here he is again. On filler lasts decades. It does not last a year or two. It does not need to be touched up all the time. It lasts decades. We know that from MRI studies. We know that from histology studies, biopsying the filler, and we know it from direct observation of that filler in tissue. There is no question this filler is not going away quickly. I don't care what type of hyaluronic acid filler you say you're injecting or how long it lasts. I hear it every single week. My injector said there's no way this filler is going to be left and I always find it, and I always take a video so you can go show your injector. That filler is still there years or decades after it was injected that very first time. On a very interesting side note, those same MRI studies and those same histology studies show that that filler migrates. I did a study with one of my fellows a few years back, and we did a study on 50 consecutive lip lifts where women had had it injected into their lips, and on the subnasal region of their excision, filler was present on 49 of the 50 of those histologically proven. That filler is migrating through that muscle. It does not stay where it's put. Hmm. All of this that I'm talking about regarding filler and filler duration and dissolving is all related to hyaluronic acid fillers, which are the ones that are supposed to dissolve and go away the fastest. Hyaluronidase is the enzyme that is supposed to magically dissolve the magic wand that just gets rid of the hyaluronic <coughs> acid filler. If you don't like it, we can just dissolve it. Here's the unpopular opinion. Hyaluronidase works, but it doesn't work that well. It's certainly no magic bullet, and it doesn't come without a bit of a price to your tissue. This is where I really start to lose some of my colleagues and injectors who believe that hyaluronidase has no issues with tissue whatsoever. There's nothing that proves that. Well, that's not entirely correct. And in animal models, 
Hyaluronidase is shown to dehydrate tissue and change the biomechanics of tissue. It is not different in our skin. It does change the way that our skin and soft tissue fat pads behave. It changes their biomechanics and it changes how they function during surgery. We see that all the time. If we even think back to the history of hyaluronidase use in local anesthetic, that's often cited. Hyaluronidase was used forever in local anesthetic very safely. What was the mechanism of its use? It was used to break down the extracellular matrix and allow that anesthesia to spread faster. It was doing what many people think it doesn't do. It was breaking down that tissue, allowing the anesthesia to spread faster. That's the point. The hyaluronidase has a detrimental effect on the local tissue. That doesn't mean we can't recover from it. And when I see issues with it, it tends to be people who are injected with it very frequently in very high doses. Recently, this article caused quite a stir because it reported that facial filler causes cancer. Now, this is a major misinterpretation of findings by a group of plastic surgeons who presented at their conference, and I will quote, hyaluronic acid, the key compound in most fillers, has been found to block lymphatic channels. So I'll link this in the caption for you, but they did not find that fillers cause cancer. They did mention that research is being planned to see if there's a risk. So for me, as a TCM practitioner, I don't need to wait for that study. The strong possibility that filler blocks lymphatic channels, that's enough, that's major. So we have a word for this in Chinese medicine, stagnation. From a Chinese medicine lens, filler's kind of like a plug sitting in your tissues. And if it's blocking lymphatic channels, it's also blocking energy channels and potentially stagnating healthy blood flow. Something I've seen in my patients who've had dermal fillers but no longer get them are hard nodules or adhesions under the skin. And on top of that, the skin often has these irregular wrinkle or line formations because of that nodule pulling on the skin. And I have to work so much harder to soften up that nodule so that the tissue and therefore the skin can look a bit more healthy and normal. So this is a list of symptoms that can occur when there's stagnation in the face. And I'd be curious if you've had filler, if you experienced any of these things shortly after. Now, if you have any of these acupuncture, gua sha, or cupping with a TCM professional can be really helpful. Okay, so this is the study that she was quoting. So blocking lymphatic channels. Um, that's hyaluronic acid fillers, which are supposedly not permanent. And then in permanent fillers, I found a study of the 57 patients who had facial implantation of the filler. 34 of them had migration to the cervical lymph nodes. So that's pretty grim information, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What about all those, the topical hyaluronic acid things? Do you think that that is safer than? Yes, because I mean the filler is not just hyaluronic acid, it's right. some sort of binding okay. agent. And that's yeah. what people do on their lips to make them big, right? Yes, yeah. Hyalur we, we produce hyaluronic acid in our skin. It's naturally in our, in our skin. That's what gives us the hydrated plump look. It's naturally there. So yeah. do you think that the topical topical's fine doesn't like clog your lip nose and no. stuff? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, however, like things do absorb into the skin, right. and I've, if you're using toxic products on your face, your lymph nodes will be um, absorbing that and processing that for you. It may process it out of your system, and you can, if you have good detoxification, it would certainly be good. Um, but yeah, it is, everything that we put on our skin affects us internally. Yeah, we absorb. So, um, so here's a model for holistic longevity. Looking at um, supplements and medications, diet, regenerative therapies, sleep, exercise, recovery, and social connection. This is by no means an exhaustive list. Hello. Hey, sorry. It's all right. And um, I'm going to go into the colored ones. So here are some ideas. It's by no means a complete list, and I would be interested to hear your input as well. But exercise is one of the most important things that you can do for your health and well-being. As a practitioner, I've 
interviewed a lot of people about their health and those that exercise are by far way better off than those that don't. Even the ones that have a healthy diet, people that exercise are just better off. <laughs> it's called circulation, chi flow, blood flow. Um, as you were mentioning, detoxification techniques, super important. We live in a toxic world. We always need to be doing something to detox our systems. Um, improving our digestion is a really good one. Making sure we're, we're nourished. Um, acupuncture is great for getting that chi flowing, that energy. Um, energy practices like qigong and yoga to release blockages and build vital forces. I'm a fan of pulsed electromagnetic frequency therapy and scalar energy. It's like putting um, battery chargers on your cells. Uh, light therapy. Uh, doing what brings you joy, connection, be social, time in nature, good air, clean air in your home. Um, what kind of environment are you living in? Is it, is it good? <laughs> um, therapy to release emotional blockages, release traumas, reprogram yourself into a loving mindset. Um, eliminate and reduce stress, reduce inflammation. Um, I like hyperbaric oxygen therapy, deep breathing, breath work, more exercise. Um, and a lot of people are really into like sun protection and don't ever see the sun. I'm not one of those. Uh, I think we need the sunlight. We need vitamin D. We're made to absorb sunlight. It's the yang energy it's of our hours. solar system. <laughs> Just not for three hours. 20 minutes, full sun. Depends on the person. Depends on the person, totally. Um, but, you know, protecting yourself when you're going to be out in the sun for a long time. Um, good quality sleep. Um, more ways to, to move your chi and your blood, massage, hydrotherapy. Are there any that I haven't mentioned that you like for increasing longevity and feeling good? I do like hot and cold. I do, hot, I do very cold showers for like three minutes. And I, as, as much as I hate it, I feel so alive when I'm done. And my face feels tighter and everything is just like... Mm. Thanks for sharing. Passing that on. Mm. Yeah, you like the red sauna? Yeah. Did you put that up there, red sauna? No, that's not up Sweating. there. De Sweating. Detoxification, it would right. be included yeah. in there, yeah. but yeah. Mm -hmm. say colon so hydrotherapy. Colon so hydrotherapy. Yeah, oh. that's super helpful for Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I'm going to share a bit about the perspective that I enjoy <laughs> and come from, and that's um, viewing the body as a garden and we are an ecosystem and we are not separate from the earth we are part of the earth and um, health equals balance and harmony and um, your goal should be to learn how to cultivate and support that garden and growth and your acupuncturist or holistic healer is is helping you weed out imbalances and learn how to tend to that garden so cosmetic facial acupuncture treatment is, is based on the physical, the spiritual, and the psycho-emotional, just like Chinese medicine in general. So as a way to describe things, um, they're categorized into the elements in Chinese medicine. So we have, um, and, and in relationship to cosmetic acupuncture and the skin, the for example, fi the fire element is related to the blood vessels and the heart. and so. A lot could be said about the complexion, and if it's out of balance, you might have broken capillaries or rosacea or eczema. Um, if the spleen and stomach, which is the earth element, it's digestion, um, it, it controls muscles. And so if you have prolapse or you're puffy, that's often we look, at the, we look to the spleen to treat the spleen with that. With the metal element, we have the large intestine and the lung, and that the metal, every organ system manifests in an external organ. So for the lung and large intestine, it is the skin. So we focus a lot on the large intestine and the lung. Um, the kidney is also very involved in aging, 
It's our genetic material, it's our DNA, and it's our bones. And so aging, we focus on the kidney a lot as well. And then the liver, which is the wood element. The liver <coughs> is in control of the free flow of chi in the body and the blood. It's a container of blood. It releases the blood and how much nourishment your body gets. And it's also completely in control of collagen production in your body. The liver and gallbladder are the masters of the tendons and sinews. So skin creasing, wrinkles, acne, all of that. So these are just generalizations. And here we have <laughs> a facial diagram. Um, it's good if, you, if you're diagnosing a face or looking at your own, you can see what's happening inside of you. There are a lot of different facial maps out there. This is one that I really relate to and I would agree with. Mm -hmm. Take a look at that. And then there's an emotional map, which is very much related to the, the organ map. Mm -hmm. Like for example, on the bottom on the chin, we have the kidney area. And here on the kidney area, we have fear, mm -hmm. which is the emotion of the kidney. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, one of my teachers, Lillian Bridges, this is from her, um, she, you can, like people are palm readers and tell you your future, she can read your face, or she used to be able to, she's no longer with us, but um, you can read your face just by taking a look. And like what you went through when you were one years old, what you, what are you going, what's your future like? What your personality is like? It's very, it's very fascinating. And then speaking of emotions, all of the, the elements are related to a whole host of emotions. Um, it, whether the organ is in balance or out of balance. So, you know, an imbalance um, liver would be kind and creative and cur courageous. That's like the emotion of the gallbladder is courage and decisiveness. But when it's out of balance, you might be depressed or irritable or frustrated. Mm. You'd be jealous or resentful. Mm. Each of these systems are related to emotions. It's interesting to interview people and see what they're you know, dealing with. And you can diagnose them that way and treat them that way. Um, I think <laughs> in general, the Western world has a big imbalance between earth and wood dealing with that a lot. Mm -hmm. Over like the, the spleen and stomach, the emotion is worry and we have um, mm -hmm. like insecurity, low self-worth, obsessed, over-focused, overthinking, ungrounded, mm -hmm. preoccupied. And then we have the anger bit. Mm -hmm. And then here, I just wanted to go over a little diagnosis. Here we have an eyelid of a woman and it's puffy and it's sagging. And, you know, um, some people would be like, oh, she needs an eye lift or something like that. But I'm like, no. The puffy eyelid is just the tip of the iceberg. Mm. And so these are the things that are going on underneath the surface. Toxin accumulation, phlegm accumulation, inflammation, inhibited fluid transport and circulation, poor digestion, improper diet and lifestyle, which also is around spleen chi deficiency. And that's how I would diagnose her. Okay, so this is to go into the spleen stomach pancreas functions. It prevents hemorrhage. It holds the energy of the spleen, holds blood in the vessels. So if you have broken blood vessels or um, prolapse, um, hemorrhoids, that sort of thing. That's a spleen issue. Um, so it prevents water retention. So this woman obviously is struggling with that. Um, if you're foggy headed, likely your spleen's not functioning as it should. Um, if you're not, if you have loose stools, you're not getting everything you could out of your food. And muscle weakness or collapse of the muscles, the spleen energy ascends in the body and holds everything in its place. And so with cosmetic acupuncture, you can see all the points that are in the face and then 
points on the body. And I don't just treat the face for facial concerns. I'm treating the entire body, working on all the points. Um, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so acupuncture points, um, which some of you may know, <laughs> the acupuncturists here. Um, in, if you were to look at it from an anatomical perspective, it would be like the points are where there are superficial nerves, blood vessels. There's more electrical resistance in these areas, and they conduct signals through the fascia at these points. And um, this is what happens when you place a needle in the body. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like sometimes. <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to talk about the fascia. Like, it, it functions in that network of fascia, and, and fascia is made of collagen, and it, it, it is an entire network. It's like the mycelium of the body. People look at mycelium in the ground as the, the nervous system of the forest. Well, the fascia actually conducts signals faster than the nervous system. And um, so acupuncture and a lot of the therapies that I do are all about breaking up stagnation within the fascia and using that. Mm -hmm. And so here is a picture of the collagen fibers underneath the degrading mm. and a healthy collagen. And this collagen is the main component of connective tissue, and so it's about you know, 25 to 35% of the whole body protein content is collagen in your system. So super important to nourish the things that nourish your collagen in your system. And acupuncture helps that, is that correct? Yes. So acupuncture needling creates a natural wound healing cascade to release growth factors to stimulate production and deposition of collagen in the dermal layer, layer of the skin. Um, and here's um, a study that took 300 cases, people treated with facial acupuncture, and 90% had a market effect of with 10 courses with 10 treatments, and everybody demonstrated improvement in skin texture, skin color, skin elasticity, wrinkle reduction, overall rejuvenation. And of course, with acupuncture, since you're treating the whole being, you're going to have side effects, like less pain and better digestion and easier cycles and happier bodies and mm -hmm. emotions. Mm -hmm. So here's someone I worked with. Um, she was a 43-year-old woman, and she came in wanting help with her double chin, sagging skin, dark circles under her eyes, the 11s in her forehead, and crow's feet around her eyes. She also complained of a stiff neck, carpal tunnel syndrome, mm -hmm. thoracic outlet syndrome, extreme PMS, painful and stagnant periods. Mm -hmm often dealt with anxiety and grief, digestive difficulties, IBS, hearing loss, has a tendency to be cold, and hands and feet were always cold. Hmm. So diagnosing her, we can look at the picture and the facial map. She's, um, and based on her symptoms, she had um, a lot of kidney chi deficiency. So I was really working with her kidneys and a lot of blood stagnation as well. Hmm. Um, so, and liver chi stagnation and spleen chi deficiency. So, nourish the kidney jing and chi, and chi, break up stagnation, harmonize and move the liver, nourish the spleen, and clear and warm the meridians. So, it was addressing the root symptoms, the root cause, and addressing the face as well. So, I did facial gua sha, which I'll go into, cupping, massage, microcurrent, red light therapy, the jade roller. And then she did her part, and she exercised some more. She did some facial exercises. She made some changes to her diet. She took the supplement that I have over here for sale, which I made and I take on a regular basis. Which one is that? Which one? Both of them. Both of them, yes. One is more detoxifying, one is more lifting. So one's for like dark, dark spots, acne, and the other one more for lifting and wrinkles. I take them both. Um, and so we did 12 weekly treatments, and she had improvement in, I don't know if you saw the things that are circulating around, that you can take a look at the changes that happened. 
she had improvement in pain, digestion, more balanced emotions, and had overall improved circulation. So wow. here's um, the before, and this is after six treatments. You can see that her, her entire face has lifted. If you look at her eyes, her brow is lighter. Mm. The darkness under her eyes is significantly lightened. Her cheeks are, her higher. Cheeks are higher, and she has a brighter complexion. And this is a close-up of the crow's feet area. This was before she had lines. Six treatments, they're significantly reduced. Twelve treatments, gone. And this is, this is what she said. Not only do treatments rejuvenate my face with a youthful glow, but Megan tends to any other emotional or physical imbalances I'm experiencing, which she identifies in our pretreatment check-in. Sluggish digestion, painful cycle, grief, and burnout have all been treated in tandem with my fancy facial rejuvenation treatment. Where else can you go for that kind of full spectrum support, all while smoothing and firming your beautiful like, face? This is it. Oh, and can I hear from the audience if anyone has experienced these treatments and would like to? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, gosh, I had many of them last couple of years. And I'm 89. <laughs> no, but it really did help. I feel um, like I absolutely could feel the lift. And the whole body, you know, knowing what else is going on in my body is so great. And um, things that we wouldn't know, you know, like, I don't know my cheek. I mean, I know about my chi, but my kidneys or this or that. Uh, so I learned a lot. And I just, I loved how my skin feels and looks. And it's definitely looked at, uh, I want to keep coming. And how now I want to Coming. And how about the pain in your body? That oh yeah, I have a shoulder issue, and I would say that Megan erases pain. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Anytime I've been in pain, you've erased it, and it's just kind of like a magic thing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm glad. Yeah. No, and this makes me really want to figure out how to go more. <laughs> <laughs> I do have been. Uh, getting treatments from Megan for s several years now and um, I, it, I, when my mom came to visit I was with some people and they all complimented me on my face and my skin and my complexion and absolutely I think that um, it lifts, it reduces wrinkles, um, it, um, it just rejuven rejuvenates the face and and the body as well. I too have a reduction in pain and uh, a greater amount of feeling of well-being. And so, yeah, I look forward to these treatments. Thank Very you. good, and I recommend them. Thank you. All right, how do I get these results? So, cosmetic acupuncture. <laughs> um, wellness acupuncture. And can I just say that yeah. it might be a little scary to have all those needles in your face and it might not be fun, but um, you always end with the cups and the, the yeah. squash on. It's very soothing. So I just mm -hmm. want to say that. You end feeling very mm -hmm. loved and soothed. And, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so gua sha is an amazing tool that you can do yourself as well, but that I do on my patients. And um, we're going back to the mimetic muscles here. Um, it really helps break up the, the stagnation and increases the, the flexibility. So, um, so if you remember that these muscles, as we age, get very, very stiff and stuck in place. And the gua sha and the acupuncture just break that stagnation up and so you get a fresh infusion of energy and blood into these areas. Uh, facial cupping uh, works in s some way, you know, it also helps with that, but it re it's very good for drainage of the face if you're puffy in any way. It helps remove toxins, it helps cleanse the face and bring it down to the lymph nodes so that your body can process this, those toxins. Um, something else I do is microneedling. It um, works in the same way as 
um, acupuncture. You have a, a micro injury that your body then sends the stem cells, the basement layer of the dermis send new skin cells up to repair it. So you basically get a new layer of skin from these treatments. And it's very good for fine lines and wrinkles. Yeah, that's also really awesome. And good for removing dark spots as well. And scarring. And then I also do light therapy, which is, you know, it helps boost your collagen growth and helps with healing and regenerating new tissue, is soothing to the skin, helps reduce darkening, darkened spots. Um, blue light, they say, is good for acne-causing bacteria. Something else I do is microcurrent, which is very lifting, um, and it helps build collagen and elastin and enhances ATP production in your cells, so it's very invigorating to your face. Something else I offer is the amp coil, which is pulsed electromagnetic frequency. So it's basically like putting those jumper cables on the cells of your body. And it's like a, it's a, it's quiet, but it's like a, a whole symphony of Tibetan singing bowls that they're emitting frequencies that, really cool. that are supporting your system. Very cool. It can also um, help with... Hmm? This thing's called a key coil? Is it kind of made of that? It's called an amp coil. It's similar? Uh, I don't know. Well. Um, but it, it can also emit frequencies. It has a program. It emits frequencies that can kill pathogens and bacteria and viruses. So you can, you can also use it like that. I typically use it to boost energy because people don't want to feel bad, <laughs> which happens when you're detoxing. <laughs> um, so something else I wanted to mention is about building chi in your body, and that's having a really, really awesome diet, and also how you eat is, is almost as important. So don't be on your TV or your phone or in a rush, and keep difficult conversations for after the meal. Don't eat while you're emotionally distressed. Eat living in whole foods. Eat in harmony with your surroundings. Uh, eat organic and avoid processed foods. Follow the seasons, true, thoroughly, very important, and keep it simple. And so this thing that Newsweek brought up was the, the number one trend, the beauty trend, is tremella mushroom, which I love and is the main ingredient in both of my formulas. And it is very rich in polysaccharides, vitamins and minerals, it's amazing for the skin and helps you produce way more hyaluronic acid. It's anti-aging, it's a lung tonic, helps moisturize your lung, your skin, your large intestine. It supports your immune system. It's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. And as you can see, it looks a bit like a brain and it happens to also help your brain and it's neuroprotective. And it also helps your digestion. Imagine that, it's lung and large intestine. And then going into some more herbs, we have rose. Also, in the, all of these for our herbs are in my formulas, um, along with a lot of others. But these are the main ones, and I love rose. If you know, it's all, it's the love, the expression of love. Um, but it's also amazing at um, balancing your hormones. It has a lot of vitamin C. It's super good for collagen production. It soothes the skin. People put it in a mist for the face. It's a toner. It's an astringent. It helps you moisturize and seal in moisture. It also helps you heal from UV damage. And hibiscus is very similar to the rose, I would say. And it's very good at detoxing and cooling. And it's all about it. Mm -hmm. And then we have bamboo, which really supports collagen production because it's rich in silica. Silica is necessary for like all structural support in the body, so it helps build your bones and collagen, um, including your blood vessels. Also reduces inflammation, hydrates the skin, helps with wound healing, detoxifying, rich in nutrients. The other one, why I often look bright, is because of cordyceps. It's very energizing. It's super oxygenating to the skin and to the blood. 
and it helps to produce more energy and it tonifies the kidneys and the lungs. And then sea moss is full of vitamins and minerals, has omegas in it, so it helps produce collagen, helps produce hyaluronic acid, and it has iodine, so it supports your thyroid, hormones, skin, and radiation damage. So there it is. So, <laughs> have you ever had a house plant that was suffering and covered in bugs and you were spraying it with insecticide? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I have. <laughs> if, you, if you move the plant to a different location where it has light and good air and space to grow, and you start nourishing it and feeding it food and giving it water, it totally changes and flourishes. And you don't have to use any insecticide for it. The bugs, the immune system of the plant just, just gets the plant. The, you know, the bugs go away. And we are no different. And so, <laughs> um, I know how disheartening it can be to um, look in the mirror or catch a glimpse of yourself and you see more sags, bags, and wrinkles. And many times the approach to treating these is through invasive procedures. And that doesn't really help your body or your vitality at all. And so you may be having more issues down the road from these procedures. And so what's missing from this is um, a sustainable life-giving treatments and way of living. And recognizing that beauty comes from the inside out. And staying connected to your wisdom. So and in conclusion, I, I urge you to stop putting so much importance on society's ideals of what beauty is and instead focus on nourishing yourself and doing what brings you joy in the world. Um, and because you showed up here today, I want to offer a thank you. And I am offering those that are here a, third, a free 30 minute uh, video consultation to get your glow on and I will assess your most frustrating health concern and facial concern and give you a plan and a tongue diagnosis and the offer is only available today so sign up for that How do we do that? there's a sign up sheet right there and I also have a um, a dietary sheet for you to address specific facial concerns so you can there's a list of foods that help treat dark spots foods that help treat wrinkles that sort of thing and warning treatments with me may result in increased confidence libido and promiscuity I take no responsibility for this but I'm now offering tinder profile consulting Just <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>